every knee shall bow of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So let me just tell y'all now, you either do it now or you do it later. But one day, everybody on in heaven and earth and even under the earth, one translation says, even hell itself is going to acknowledge who Yeshua is. That is also confirmed in Hebrews chapter one right now. And this is wonderful. So make sure that you guys are connected, continue um, to share, continue to be a part of this. Now, this is something I want to share. In Job 42, five through six, it says, look at Job. This is after Job um, confronts, this is after uh, Job confronts God because of all the stuff that he's going through. And then God responds. God goes, well, where were you? And his answer becomes three chapters long, right? And then here it is. This is now Job's response. And this is something, and again, I'm not here bashing Mormonism. My thing is not to harm anybody. My thing is this right here. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear but now my eyes sees you. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. See, that's the thing right now is that Mormons and, and a lot of people in the world, you only know about Jesus by what you have heard about him or what you learned from him, from your elders or from the maybe your family or priest or whatever. But the thing is about the Lord is that he has made himself available to us. He will show you who he really is if you ask him to reveal himself to you. This is something very important that I feel like many people, you got to get out of what I've heard about the Lord. I have heard about him. I've heard about Jesus. I've heard um, the Christians say this. I've heard the Mormons say this. It's not about what you've heard. It's about now my eyes have seen and I have experienced him for myself. I know who he is. He is the Lord. He is the one that the Bible describes to the letter. Everything about him. I tell you the truth. I am not speaking as somebody who's saying, well, this is what I heard. This is what I learned. No, this is who I know. This is who I've met face to face. This is who loved me so much that he gave himself for me, that this is the God who before I was even put on this earth had nothing but great things in store thought nothing but great things about me. This is the Lord who, when I saw him face to face and the church was done with me and the church um, wanted nothing to do with me, the same mouths that called me a blessing were now calling me a curse. This same Lord that came to me and said, Simba, I like you. You have a great sense of humor. I love being around you. Who taught me the truth? Who taught me who he was? Who is the most beautiful and most amazing being I have ever beheld? Who, when I saw him, the only thing I thought, how can I be like you? You're so authoritative, yet so gentle. Get out of what you've heard and open your eyes. Ask the Lord to open your eyes, to open your heart, to see who he truly is. That's not even the sermon um, verse. That's just what I hope. And this is what I'm decreeing as a king in God's empire and as an apostolic and prophetic voice, I pray Mormons, for the Mormons, for those who are in cults, 
that get out of what you've heard and see for yourself who he is. And repent when you realize who he is. Come to the Lord. That's my only message. I'm going to get to that in a minute, but let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 10, because this is really where the message and where the word is going to come from today. Yep, I feel the Holy Spirit, the angelic hosts are excited, you can tell. Here's the word today. I hope you guys are ready. It says here in Daniel chapter 7, verse 10, it said, A fiery stream issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. Then I watched because of the sound of the boastful words which the horn was speaking. I watched even until the beast was slain, and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As for the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night visions, and there was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancients of days and was presented before him. There was given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, let me, somebody say in the chat, all peoples. All peoples. It says that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Now, listen here right now. You need to understand this right now. Because a lot of people, they were like, oh, yeah, we understand that Yeshua is son of man. We understand that. We understand Jesus is son of man. No, you don't. You don't understand that the scripture says, and I saw one who looked like the son of man. It doesn't mean necessarily that he was flesh. He's saying he looked somebody who's human. He looks like a son of man. And this son of man is no ordinary son of man. What is this son of man going to do? He came before the ancient of days. There was given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations and languages shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Now I'm going to show y'all something real quick. We're going to go to Mark chapter 14, 61 to 62. This is when Yeshua is on trial before the Jews. This is when Yeshua is on trial and uh, they're asking him all these questions, but I love this. But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of power coming with the clouds of heaven. Now, I know some of you are probably wondering, Simba, where are you going with this? Let me tell you something, because the, the thing that a lot of people don't understand is that you have to really understand who this Jesus is. I'm not talking about the true Jesus. The true Jesus is not some... Um, good teacher, some prophet, some man. No, this is God in flesh. This is the one who brings a kingdom. Who is the one that is to be worshiped and magnified? Who every knee and, and everyone who was made, the scripture says everything was made by him and for him. Let me tell you something. If everything was made by him and for him, he cannot be a creature or creation. Because everything was created. The scripture says everything. Somebody say everything. I need somebody in the chat to say everything. So that means he cannot be created. He cannot be. Y'all need to understand this. If everything was made by him and for him, then what the Mormons are saying about Jesus, it cannot be true. 
Let him cook now. Let him cook. I said let him cook. Because as we've been over in the Bible studies, in everything, if you look even in the ancient Hebrew, it points to the Son of God or God the Son. The Father acknowledging who the Son is. Hebrews chapter 1, God the Father calls Yeshua God. Says, your throne, O God. Why does he say your throne? Oh, y'all missed that. He's saying your throne to confirm that he is the son of man in Daniel 7, that he has given a kingdom. Y'all missed that. I hope you are not missing this. This Jesus is not just um, some fairy tale. This is the maker of you and me. This is the one who was so intentional. See, I can't accept the Mormon's plan of salvation. I can't accept that because in Mormon teaching, a Mormon belief is that um, Yeshua just wanted to be the savior of the world. That he wanted us to be like God, but they do not acknowledge him as God himself. He is the son of God, but we're all the children of God because we pre-existed and we were all spiritual children. And as you know, as the running joke, but I cannot deny this, we were white when we pre-existed. We were all white when we pre-existed. That's the Mormon. But I can't accept that plan of salvation because it was all about becoming gods and things like that. But let me tell you something. That makes no sense when you understand who the true Jesus is. His love and his way of thinking, he never wanted to be separated from us in the first place. Oh, y'all missed that. His plan of salvation, the true plan of salvation, was to bring you back into him, bring you back into the union and relationship. It wasn't even to bring you back. It was to make a new relationship, something that not even Adam possessed. So Mormons, the teaching that you're saying is that he wants to bring us back to our Heavenly Father. No, that is not what he wanted. He wants to bring you into a union and a relationship with him to go beyond what even we had at the beginning of creation. Adam had a relationship with the Lord where he will come and he will walk and he will fellowship with him. But what Jesus has done, he has done something. The Bible says, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature the old has passed away it is not to restore something it is to bring something new the god of the bible jesus said you are something now that the world has never seen before you now are a being that can have the eternal union and relationship My life wow. is in Jesus, That's good. Come on. but Jesus' life is also in me. Come on. Woo. Amen. Thank you. My life is in Jesus, but Jesus' life is also in me. You talking about and preaching this doctrine, talking about what well, we can become gods. That sounds just like what the devil told Adam and Eve at the beginning, you can be God. Let me tell you something. I know what a God is. I have no intention. My desire is not to be a God. My desire is to be with the one true living God, the God of gods. That is my desire. My desire is to be in an eternal union and relationship and eternal love with him. I want to be a part of what he's doing. 
I want to be where he is, where he's going. I want to go with him. I don't want to be separated from him. I don't want to have my own universe and my own world where I am my own God and I have my spirit wife and we have spirit children and I basically do the system all over again. Heck no. I want to be complete in him. I want to sit where he's sitting. I don't care if I get the seat to his right or to his left. I just want to be there. I want when he's doing something, I want to be a part of it. I want to go where he is. I want to see what he gets to see. I want to be a true lover of God. That is my desire. If your desire is saying, well, you got to do all these things to become a God. You have to do all these rituals. You have to be viewed in the right standing. You have to wear sacred underwear. You have to do all these things. And yet the Lord said, all you need to do is to have a union and relationship with me. All you need is to know me. And allow my love to change you from the inside out, not the outside in. Let me show you what you were made for. Let me tell you something. In fact, what the Mormons teach, if they say you can become a God, that's actually less of what God actually wants to give you. Uh Uh-oh. Why? Because when they say every time, and I've read it and I've read it a thousand times, every time they say you can become a God, it's always little G, right? Little G, it's a little G. If you understand what a God is, then little G is actually less of what God actually wants to give you. Uh Uh-oh. Because what is God? God is big G, right? Big G, meaning he is the God of gods. He is the most high. Big G. He is the God of gods. Big G. The Bible calls us heirs of God. Joint heirs with Christ. That means everything he inherits, just like my wife, for example, me and my wife are in a union. Everything that I get, my wife has access to. Y'all missed that. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. So if it says I am an heir of God, big G, and I'm joint heir with Christ, That's way bigger than little G God. That's bigger than being a God of your own planet, your own universe, whatever. No. You see how how Satan always tried to give you less than what God actually wants to give you? He makes it sound glorious, but it's nowhere near the glory of what the Most High has in store for those who love him. Are you understanding this here? I'm going somewhere by the Holy Spirit. In fact, I'm going to show y'all something. I'm going to go to Answers in Genesis real quick. Holy Spirit, please give them revelation. Holy Spirit, please give them revelation and please show them. Let's go here real quick. Look at this. I want y'all to see something. Though this man probably hasn't gained much, 
the Bible does predict that in the last days, false Christ and false prophets will come and deceive many. Many people these days are putting their faith in false or imaginary Christ who cannot save them. You might meet two of these false Christs introduced to you by Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses. This is the Mormon's Jesus. If a Mormon ever knocks on your door, he will bring a Jesus who is the spirit brother of Lucifer. This Jesus is one of the billions of spirit babies that our heavenly father and our heavenly mother brought into this universe. That's a Gnostic teaching. That's Gnosticism. I'm just telling you. According to some Mormon leaders, when Jesus lived on earth, he had several wives. Oh, so now you're saying Jesus had several wives, one of whom was Mary Magdalene, but this is not official doctrine. After his death and resurrection, he came to America to preach to the Indians. That is not what the scripture tells, and that is not what the Messiah would do. Now, I'm going to show y'all something because I want to teach you something. It says, I'm sure you recognize that these cultists have a Jesus different from the Jesus of the Bible, but can you describe the true biblical Jesus? Many Americans cannot. One survey showed that though 80% of Americans will call Jesus the son of God, only 40% believed that he was God. And only 40% believed he was sinless. This shows that millions of people have a mental concept of a false Christ, one who cannot save them. It is important for all Christians to be certain that our beliefs about Jesus accurately reflect biblical truth so that we are not deceived and so that we can introduce him to others. So what do we believe concerning Jesus? Our basic beliefs about Jesus could be divided into three categories connected to three special days that we celebrate. Now, again, I'm not going to go too much into that, but I want you to see this right here. Jesus is God. The Jesus of the Bible is not simply a human, however. He is also the one, infinite, limitless God of the universe. Jesus makes this claim himself. He said, I and my father are one. Now listen and understand what that means. That doesn't mean one as in they are the same person. One meaning that they are in union, that they have they that they are in agreement. That's what God, that's what it means that three and one, they are in agreement. And that's what Yeshua prayed for you in John 17. He said that I desire that they be one in me, that they be one, just as Father, you and I are one. Oh, come on, somebody. That is his desire. So let's go back. I'm not letting the Mormons weasel their way out of this one. When he said this, the Jews started to pick up stones to stone him because they understood him to be saying that he was equal to God. Big G, did Jesus tell them, no, you misunderstood me. I am not really God. No, Jesus accepted their interpretation of his words as accurate. He did indeed teach that he was equal to God the Father. When Jesus said before Abraham was, I am, he was claiming to be the God of Israel, the self-existent God of the universe who called himself, I am, in Exodus 3.14. The Jews tried to stone him for this claim as well. Now, this is something I want y'all to understand. That because it's saying, oh, well, he said he was equal with God. Okay, that's the, that's the thing. He's in that class and rank of big G God. He is God the Son. He said, I do everything for the glory of my Father. But the Father also glorifies the Son. If you are saved right now, it is not because you remembered your pre-existent life and your agreement. No, it is because God the Father revealed God the Son to you so that God the Son could reconcile you back to God the Father to show you who you are and who he is. Did you understand this? If you are saved right now, that is because God the Father said, I need to show them my son because the son 
is the express image of God. This means like, let me put it to you like this. If you love Yeshua, if you love Jesus, Jesus says, if you think I'm something, wait until you see my father. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea how loved we actually are by the Lord? That he says, you know what? I need to give them somebody who understands what it is to be human. Who can empathize with them. That's where Yeshua comes in. No one understands or loves you like Jesus. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Here come the Mormons. Wait a minute. We do believe in the same Jesus. We believe he is blah, 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 etc. In fact, here's my next article of which I'm going to bury you. It's called 10 Reasons Why the Jesus of Mormonism is not the same as Jesus in the Bible. So let's go. It says, number one, LDS leaders have agreed that Mormonism teaches another Jesus. Mm. Oh, my. Uh-oh. Mm -mm. Nope. Run! <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. They teach another Jesus. Let's continue. The virgin birth doctrine, according to Mormonism, is not the virgin birth of the Bible. And I can confirm this because of my studies. It says, literally, this is literally what the Mormons use to explain this. Daddy, mommy, you. Our Heavenly Father, Mary, Jesus. Now, here's my question. How is she a virgin if she supposedly had intercourse with God the Father? You explain that to me. In fact, the Bible even says it's not even God the Father that impregnates her. The Bible says that what is conceived in her is conceived by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon him, came upon her and placed Jesus in her womb. It says not sexual intercourse. It says nothing like that. So that right there, you are not teaching the same Jesus that is of the Bible. In fact, what you're saying is more closer. You made Heavenly Father Zeus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because in Greek mythology, which some Gnosticism has some of its roots in Greek mythology, some of it, not a lot of it, but some of it. It says in Greek mythology, what was Zeus known for? Basically, Zeus was a man whore. He was a god who would become, who would come down and he would sleep with mortals and then they would produce um, half god, half uh, human offspring. This is what Mormonism teaches. This is not of God. This is not true. Humans and even Satan himself are directly related to Jesus and Mormonism. That is nowhere near in the Bible. It, it says nothing about us being related. Next, the Jesus of Mormonism is not eternally God, which is false because we confirm this by even the Hebrew writings. We have confirmed that even in Hebrew, Bereshit, at the beginning, if you spell out Bereshit and you look at the picture meaning, the picture means the Son of God. Just the first three letters. It's talking about Yeshua, Jesus. And even, you know what, Hebrews chapter 1 even confirms this. Colossians chapter 1 confirms this even more. Even Yeshua says that he, what in fact, John chapter one says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. Jesus even says, I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, meaning he is the one who kickstarted the beginning. Y'all missed that. So if he's the one who kickstarted the beginning, y'all, this is the part that, that, irks me. And you guys, 
Again, the links are in the description. You can go back and read this for yourself. I'm just giving you a brief run through because we got so much information. But look at that. Next, the Jesus of Mormonism had to be obedient in order to become a God. Wait a minute, what? That is not why he was obedient. He was obedient because he said all manners of righteousness is to be fulfilled. God himself had to step in and fulfill the law so that we could be saved by one who is sinless and one who had fulfilled the law. That's what it means in Matthew when he says to John the Baptist and he asked to be baptized. It's not so that he can become God. He was already God. He followed it to the letter so that now all we have to do is believe and trust in him because he had fulfilled the law. So he wasn't obedient to become a God. He was already God and he wasn't a little G God. He was a big G God. This is getting more and more ridiculous, but I love this. <laughs> the Jesus of Mormon is a pay for sins at the Garden of Gethsemane. Let me ask y'all something. Even the most basic Bible knowledge, okay? Where did Yeshua, where did Jesus pay the price for sin? Calvary. At Calvary. But what was the name of the place of where he was taken? It was called what? No, it was called Golgotha, right? At Calvary, Golgotha. What does he do in the Garden of Gethsemane? He prays and he asks the Lord, what? If this cup can be passed from me, let's go with that. But not my will, thy will be done. And it's beautiful. Because if you understand what Golgotha means, means the place of the skull, where the cross is, what did uh, Genesis say? Genesis said, you will strike his heel, but he will crush your head. If you look at the picture, Golgotha means what? Skull. Where the cross is, it looks like a cross is being placed in a skull's head. So where he pays the price at Golgotha, the place of the skull, he is crushing the enemy's head. He is crushing sin and death. Amen. Not at Gethsemane, but at Golgotha is where he paid the price. Yes. His death was his ultimate victory. Mm. Come on. And because of his victory, it's our victory. Y'all, who here is understanding this? Mm. Am I cooking or what? Let me know in the, if I'm cooking. According to LDS teaching, the Jesus of Christianity was invented. Oh, so we made this stuff up. No. Joseph Smith, your Gnostic, Masonic, false prophet made this stuff up. Sacred underwear, are you kidding me? Secret handshake? Mm. Secret, sacred temple ceremony, ceremonies for the dead? You know who else do ceremonies for the dead? Mm. Occultists. The Jesus of Mormonism had the potential to sin. How's he going to sin if he's God in the flesh? Please make it make sense. Some LDS leaders had taught that Jesus was married and had a family. Not all, okay? This isn't all LDS, but some did. Why? Because they wanted Jesus on their team to justify the acts that they were doing. Having multiple wives. But... People need to remember that Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, and a couple other LDS leaders were perverts. They married 16-year-olds. They married 15-year-olds. We just went over last uh, week that Joseph Smith groomed a 12-year-old after blessing her. Are you kidding me? 
Now, I'm about to put the nail in the coffin. The work Jesus did on the cross in Mormonism is not enough by itself for a person to receive forgiveness of sins. That right there, I just want to throw away the whole religion. Is not the blood sufficient? It is not the price. In fact, the Bible says in Colossians, it said that when he died on the cross, it said that he made all works of the enemy powerless. So in some degrees, I do agree, but the forgiveness of sins is not about what I've, it's about what he has done. And if I ask for forgiveness, he will forgive, but then it becomes my responsibility to not keep offending and to not keep breaking the law and to not, let me ask you something. If I were, and this will never happen, but I need y'all to pray for me so that it never happens. If I were ever to cheat on my wife and I come back and I apologize and she takes me back and then I do it again and I do it again and again, let me tell you something. Am I really sorry for the actions that I have done if I keep doing the same thing over and over again? This is why it's very foolish of me where they said, well, all you need to do is ask Jesus for forgiveness and he'll just forgive you. No. In the same way that if you are going to do something to me, I can forgive you, but that doesn't mean we're going to have a relationship. You understand this here? Yeah. I mean, I love you, but I'm not going to keep being abused by you. Why do you think Jesus is the same way? In fact, that's why the Bible says he gave us um, the tools to live life to the fullest in godliness. Meaning the Holy Spirit, if you allow the Holy Spirit to come in you and to work in your heart and in your mind and you allow him to continue his work, then what's going to happen is that, yes, you may still be simple, but at least if you apologize, then guess what? The Holy Spirit will help you make the difference. You start to change your life. If you understand what I'm talking about, that's why the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say what you have been redeemed from. You don't, um, if you drink um, and you're constantly getting drunk, said, Jesus, I'm sorry. Okay, Jesus forgave me. Time to go get hammered. No, that's not how it works. The Bible even says, if you believe in your heart, why does it say believe in your heart and confess with your mouth? It says believe in your heart because your heart, it's a love thing. It starts with love. If I love you, I'm not going to keep offending you. If I love you, I'm not going to keep doing things that displease you or harm you. You understand this here? If I love you, then that's what it is. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth because if you confess with your mouth, because you're made in the image of God. And so when you speak, what happens in the spirit realm, it becomes um, like solid. It's a declaration. Jesus, you are Lord. Yeshua, you are my Lord. Then guess what? If he's Lord, that goes to all the demons in hell. That goes to Satan himself. You cannot touch this one because this one belongs to Yeshua. I'm going to wrap this up. There's just one more thing I want to show you. Because the Latter-day Saints are going to say, what do we believe are Christians on the basis of our doctrine? No, you are not. No. You are a cult and in some of your rituals, a cult. You are Gnostic. You are not Christian. Okay? 
believe, son of God, blah, 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 miracles. He was born of a virgin. I don't know how when God the Father impregnated her. See, this is why we call this the devil in the details. You have to look in the details. It sounds good. It sounds like us, doesn't it? But then you go deeper. We believe Jesus is the son of God, the father, and as such inherited powers of godhood and divinity from his father. That is not true. Basically, what you're saying is because he is God, the son, he inherit. No, he was God at the beginning. He didn't inherit power. He already had it. You understand this here. But here's the part. I'm going to put the final nail in the coffin with Mormonism, Jesus, right here. We believe Jesus taught his gospel, the glad tidings or good news that salvation had come to earth through him in order that people might more clearly understand both their relationship to God the Father and responsibility to each other. Um, let me do y'all a favor. Y'all read that? Let me tell y'all something. That was not the gospel Yeshua came and taught. Let me say it again, Mormons. Joseph Smith is a liar and that doctrine is false. Yeshua, when he came and preached the gospel, he said nothing to the masses about him dying on the cross and being raised from the dead. He said nothing about salvation. He only mentioned salvation to the ones who were closest to him. The gospel that he preached when he first came is called the gospel of the kingdom. It's called the kingdom of God message, not the gospel of salvation. That is not what Yeshua preached on the earth. So you right there, Mormons, is the final nail in your coffin that I'm going to do for this because that is not the gospel that Jesus actually taught. You have no idea what the actual Jesus taught, which is confirmed in the article that you don't teach the same Jesus. You teach a fabrication of false Jesus. And I'm going to prove it by using the word of God right here. Let's go to Matthew 4. Oh, this is my final we going filet mignon type of cook right here. Philippians chapter 2, 10 through 11 says, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father. So let me just tell y'all now, you either do it now or you do it later. But one day, everybody on in heaven and earth and even under the earth, one translation says, even hell itself is going to acknowledge who Yeshua is. That is also confirmed in Hebrews chapter one. We just went over that. This is also confirmed at Daniel chapter seven. Because what does God the Father said? God the Father, we saw one approach the ancient of days and was given unto him what? A kingdom, dominion, glory, that all nations, all peoples will what? Bow down and worship. You see how the Bible is consistent in this message? So now let me put the final nail. Matthew chapter four. This is after he's tempted of Satan. Look at this. The beginning of the Galilean ministry. So this is when Yeshua starts his ministry. Okay, here we go. Now when Jesus heard that John was put in prison, he left for Galilee. In leaving Nazareth, he came and lived in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali, that was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, might be fulfilled, saying, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way to the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness saw great light. 
We just confirmed this in our Bible study. Who is the light of the world? Yeshua, thank you very much. Let's continue. And all those who sat in the land of the shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach saying, what? Repent. For the kingdom of what? Heaven is what? Here. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of heaven is here. So what does it say? It says it right there. His Galilean ministry started, and what was his gospel that he was bringing? Put it in the chat. It was not the gospel of salvation. It was the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. It's right there. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. Okay. Now, you want me to prove that salvation was only mentioned to his disciples? Watch. Let's go to Mark chapter 9, 30, 32. They departed from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. After he is killed, he will rise the third day. Let me say that again. For he was teaching who? The masses, the world. He only taught his disciples what? The son of man will be delivered into the hands of men and they will kill him. After he is killed, he will rise the third day. But they did not understand the teaching and were afraid to ask him. His own disciples didn't understand it, so why would he share it with the masses? Let me put it up again. The Mormon Jesus is a false Jesus. Not the Jesus revealed in the Bible. He only taught his disciples that part. In fact, that's why he tells his disciples, don't tell anybody until I have been raised from the dead. Why? Because they wouldn't believe him. But in Galilee, he's preaching about the kingdom of God. What is the gospel message of the kingdom of God? The gospel message of the kingdom of God is that God's kingdom has now come into the earth and has overthrown the powers of darkness and overthrown the powers of Satan. And God, by his blood, he has made you kings and priests. It means that you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, meaning that God... When Christ comes, he, if you accept him into your life, you are now a spiritual king in his empire, meaning you have the power and the authority by Jesus Christ, by Yeshua, to overthrow the powers of Satan, overthrow the powers of death and hell. You can change the situations that are in your life. What the devil means for evil, you have the authority to say in the name of Yeshua, let I, I release the kingdom of God. Let everything in my life that is out of order come back in order. Let the what the devil means for evil, let God turn it around for his good. I am taken from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The true Jesus of the Bible says that just as I have overcome the world, so shall you. Just as I am seated with the Father on his throne, I will allow you to sit with me on my throne. Amen. As soon as you accepted Christ, you have overcome the world. You have overcome Satan. You have overcome, you have the power and the authority by Jesus, by Yeshua, to overcome every addiction, every affliction, 
to overcome night terrors, to overcome sleep paralysis. Why do you think when people share their testimony of sleep paralysis, when they call on the name of Jesus, they are set free? Why do you think the Lord says all those who are weary, heavy laden, who are tired of the religion, who are tired of the heartbreak, who are tired of the hypocrisy, who are tired of false doctrines and false teachings. He says, come to me and I'll give you rest. I'll show you the truth. I'll show you my love for you. I'll show you who you are. It's over, it's over ladies and gentlemen.